Anyway, hiking buddy uh, J. Chuck Vlogs was asking uh, about the Daniel Robinson case, and so I started getting into it more and rehashed some material. And I, I want to point out a few uh, how the case is so weird and a few discrepancies. So the first thing I'm going to go, do is, um, is show the area on Google Earth. Uh, but this is Daniel Robinson's Wikipedia, so don't worry about reading it. Just type in Daniel Robinson's Wikipedia. And you're going to be looking at the same thing. The uh, first strange thing that uh, in all the reports he was last seen uh, leaving the work site. Now I'm going to show that. Well, that is not where he was last seen. So why did they keep saying that? It even says right here was his last seen leaving his job site. Okay, now he arrived for work, he had a rough night. The co-worker said he clearly was acting unusual and there was a storm brewing and uh, that he, uh, Robinson suggested, let's go into back to Phoenix and you know relax. The guy said, no, I don't want to do that. It's so he, he thought it quite strange that Robinson showing up and he clearly saw that he was being unusual and some reports say he seemed, you know, maybe on drugs, whatever, and that he waved goodbye and drove west out into the desert. And the co-worker thought it was unusual. Why would he drive west? There's nothing out there. There's nothing out there. So he was being strange. He, he was being strange. Now why does that matter? That the actual, uh, what could be considered a suspect, would be the last person that saw him. Now, if it says federal law enforcement official relayed to Daniel's father that he had seen him later that morning after he went off west out deeper into the desert where nothing was, cleaning his Jeep, cleaning his Jeep. He stated that Daniel seemed clear-headed, even though the co-worker said he most certainly was not. And they spoke briefly about target practice. Now, a federal law enforcement officer, uh, what they call an official, down in that area, what they're doing is um, tracking uh, migrants and drug deals going across the desert, stuff like that. And so he goes out, confronts him, confronts him apparently for no reason. Hey, I'm here to help. Uh, you doing okay today? Just, just saying hi. Just saying hi, I'm here to help. Uh, what are you doing out here? Uh, where are you going? And so the conversation that took place could be quite more than what a federal law enforcement official said. It could have been quite much more, just like those uh, the rednecks, the three of them that got life in prison uh, for chasing that guy down. Okay, now here's a black man alone out in the desert in that area. It's the worst thing that could that he could have been doing. But they talked about uh, uh, target practice. When, when a federal law enforcement official, meaning uh, a guy in a truck looking for drug deals and migrants, stuff like that, uh, confronted him for no reason. The official confirmed there was no damage to the Jeep at this time. And he seemed clear-headed, even though the co-worker said he most certainly was not. So, you, you see what I'm saying? The last person to see him alive automatically is a suspect. A suspect. And then, now he, say, he seemed clear-headed to me, and they talked about target practice. As he uh, tracked down Daniel cleaning his Jeep. Cleaning his Jeep? There's something there that stinks. So it was later that morning, and he confronted him, and then mysteriously 
Shortly later, the crash occurred. They, I think he could have been being chased and the federal law enforcement official could have got on the radio, hey Bill, we got one out here. We got one out here, he seems stoned, uh, whatever, cleaning his Jeep. I don't believe it. Cleaning his Jeep? So let's go to where the location is. Anyway, this is Phoenix for reference. There's Phoenix. There's the White Take Mountains. Um, and according to Wikipedia and the other reports, the job site, in other words, the drilling, was being done near West Cactus Road and Sun Valley Parkway. And so the vehicle was found, you know, roughly in this location. A person uploaded a video showing the power substation and a, a cluster of towers. That's this area. And so I don't know exactly. No, nobody has put an exact dot of where the vehicle was, but it's very close to here. Okay, now look at what we've got. Guy goes missing. Was seen going out west into the desert, even though nothing was there. Hundreds of people searching. Hundreds of people searching in this exact area where would be a target area of where he could be. And then the uh, rancher, this is an abandoned ranch, a month later, with all these people searching, a month later finds the Jeep in a ravine, even though everyone was searching all over Hill and Creation, and yet he was exactly at the spot he was supposed to be. His clothes off, his boots took off, or his shoes took off. And so there's also a tie-in that, like a murder victim, why do they always take their shoes off or boots off? I don't know. I don't know. But right here, exactly where he was supposed to be, thousands of searchers search for a month and do not see this vehicle right next to the road in the ravine. I mean, it's, it's weird beyond belief. And then a month later, a rancher comes along and, and finds the vehicle on its side in the ravine. Uh, the other thing is that uh, the so-called 11 miles on there, the private investigator, he's full of crap in some areas that the, uh, the father hired. He's full of crap in some areas. It is a fact, and it's reported by all dealers, that the black box showed one crash, not two, and that after the crash, it's not unusual at all for the mileage to say 11 more miles this way or that way on the computer. So he's wrong. He's simply wrong. But uh, I, I think the you look at the last person that saw him alive. He could have got on the radio. Hey Bill, we got one out here. Black stones being weird and cleaning his Jeep his story doesn't it doesn't add up he, he could get on the phone to anybody to send a friend down in a pickup or whatever and chase the guy down just like they did with those three guys that chased that other guy down in Georgia and in that area a lone black man driving around in the desert that's not something you'd want to do But uh, the other thing is that uh, also the, the clothes, to show you how the reports vary, I, I read his pants were inside out. His pants, his shoes were took off, his pants were off, and they were inside out. Well, when you look at the picture of the clothes right next to the wreck, they don't appear inside out to me. 
uh, let's see, what else, what else, uh, I mean, this is no pro video, I don't have a script or nothing like that, but, uh, so they find the Jeep on its side, it's clothes, wallet, everything there, phone, uh, I, I think he was being chased, I think he was being chased, and it traces to the federal law enforcement official, in that he was being chased, they, it could have been the guy that talked to him. I'm here to help. Uh, what are you doing out here? I'm just checking to see if you're okay. Where you, where you say you're headed? You say you're going to see your mama? And it, you know, it, it goes on and on, and that's how it happens. The, the videos on YouTube are endless of black people being stopped and shook down. So, okay, maybe the guy dr uh, drove off the federal law enforcement official and then gets on the radio, hey, Bill, we got one out here, and sends someone. You know, and why, why do you think the um, Buckeye police were not cooperative? The other thing I want to point out is that if something takes place near the closest town, they say, well, the job site was in Buckeye. It wasn't. It, it wasn't. It's, they have nothing else to go on but say, well, it was Buckeye. It, was, it wasn't in Buckeye. It was right here. So they don't find him. Everyone goes searching. They don't find him. They don't find him. And he was barefoot. Barefoot. No, he probably was, uh, he could have been already dead if they come up, well, we got, a, we got one here. And so, but they don't find him, everyone's searching all over. Now, here's the other thing, that, that if that's true, then why in the hell was everyone searching in the exact place and they don't find the truck? And also, he tried to start... Uh, 40 times to get the air conditioner going. You know, well, if that's true, suppose the, the the redneck cop out in the desert is chasing him and he goes off. He goes off into the ravine. Well, Well, then why would Robinson have stayed there for so long trying to start the truck, his clothes took off in the heat. So everything doesn't point that the, uh, the border, patrol, border Patrol agents, that's what he was. He wasn't a federal law enforcement official. He was a Border Patrol that ride around in their trucks. So if he runs him off the road like he was being chased, well, then why the 40 starts trying to get the air conditioner going? Suppose the person was chasing him and did run him off and saw that he run him off. He could have kept going and then went back. You know, so it's, it's just weird. It's weird beyond belief. But no, there's nobody out here. And the takes the shoes off, takes the boots off, that matches murder victims. He's not going to be wandering all over in the goddamn desert with no shoes and make it very far. I think he likely was being confronted and chased and went off the road to try to get away, similar to that guy in uh, Georgia where the rednecks were tracking him down. And then they return later, you know, something like that. No, the, the top, to me, the top suspect, especially since it's covered up, and they keep saying in all the reports, was last seen leaving the job site. That's not where he was last seen. He was last seen and interviewed and shook down by a federal law enforcement official that saw him later that morning cleaning his Jeep. Well, I, I don't give a damn if they call it federal law enforcement official. 
that that's a top suspect. 